Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Other Side of the Struggle. Um, if you guys can't tell, I have been, um, you know, healing from quite the cold. Uh, it's been an interesting last few weeks because of that, but um, other than my voice being a little strange, um, I hope that you guys will be able to still, you know, feel the connection from today's podcast and also just uh, really love the content that I've prepared for you today. And it's been a while since I've done a podcast just on my own, just for you guys. Um, and so I wanted to do one today. But again, just let me reiterate that I still would love to see you guys at the upcoming Rejuvenate You. Um, I will be a speaker there along with many other fabulous, fabulous people that I have since got to know and to meet and um, to share some really amazing messages with you guys. So if you guys are looking for a fantastic weekend to come and listen to healing messages and connection and uh, learn how to love yourself again, because that's really what healing is about. Come to you, the Rejuvenate You. It's March 7th, 8th, and 9th. It's going to be in Provo, Utah this year. Um, and if you're interested in a free ticket, let me know. Message me on my Facebook page, which is Erin Anderson Betrayal Trauma Coaching. Okay. So anyway, with that, let's go ahead and dive into this week's podcast episode. And a couple of weeks ago, you know, we talked about trust with Tyrell Wiltsey, but as I've been talking with my uh, personal clients and as I've been talking with uh, potential clients, this is still uh, a topic that a lot of people struggle with um, on a very, very deep level. And a lot of the reasons why is, number one, I, I don't think people were taught how to set boundaries. Like, like I know for a fact I wasn't. Um, and I don't blame my, my parents for that or anything like that because, you know, if you're a parent, you know, for a fact that uh, you're not doing everything perfectly, you know, and to expect that of yourself or expect that of your own parents really honestly you're you're setting yourself up for a very big disappointment um and as we've talked about earlier in podcasts expectation is the sh surest form of as the quickest way i should say to disappointment um and so we get to get intentional instead okay because intention is the opposite of expectation but i think that it's still smart for us to realize that possibly our parents did not teach us very well with boundaries. And again, it's not their fault. They probably weren't taught boundaries very well either. Um, what we have been taught is expectation and to live by those expectations no matter what. And that doesn't do anybody any good, okay? And this is also part of the reason, too, why, you know, with the first pillar, we talk about dropping the expectations. So that way we can actually learn to start setting boundaries. Because when we try to impose expectations on other people, that's all that is, is it's an imposition. And so boundaries, instead of feeling like the ability to connect with someone and the ability to uh, create with someone and the ability to communicate with someone, and we're going to get into those in just a second, it feels like an imposition to gain a relationship with someone. And it feels like an imposition to try to trust that person. And so any relationship that is built upon expectations is not an, a relationship that is a trusting one. Um, and we'll get into that, I think, in just a minute. So I think one of the things that we need to just chat about, like a couple of things we're going to chat about today is, number one, the trust needs to be defined. Okay. Uh, and I know that kind of sounds silly, but 
honestly, you know, as I've talked to people, uh, my clients, potential clients, uh, people online, one thing that becomes very clear is that they say they want trust, but they have no idea what trust is. And so that makes it very hard to create relationships that are trusting um, because, like I said, we don't know what trust is. Number two, we struggle with boundaries. We struggle with setting boundaries for ourselves, and therefore with other people. And because we struggle with, with setting those kinds of boundaries, we're going to struggle creating trust with other people because boundaries are are basically guidelines to a relationship if there are no guidelines then there's no way for a person to know what they're stepping on and what they're not now granted yes there should be just general rules of acceptance here are some general rules of trust i i get that but Every person is also very unique. There are some things that might bother someone that might not bother me, right? And I might be bothered by something that somebody else might not be bothered by. And it's because we're all very unique and because we have different values. And so we need to have boundaries that also reflect our value systems, okay? So we're going to talk about that. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the three C's of trust. Okay? Because if we can break down a relationship into smaller pieces, we can take a look at the relationship and see if it's one that is trustworthy or not. So let's go ahead and dive into this. And let's first and foremost talk about expectation versus intention. Now, this is the first pillar of the seven pillars, okay? Relationships that are built upon expectation are relationships that are going to disappoint. And the reason why is because an expectation is basically when you set a goal and you have someone else go and achieve that, okay? Now, um, there's someone in my in my life that um, really, really has a lot of expectations. And I still love this person. Um, but I can say that this is a person I don't trust very well. I'm not angry at this person. I don't judge this person. Um, but the truth is, is I just don't trust this person. They set all of these rules for the relationship that they don't follow, okay, that they themselves do not follow. So they set up all of these expectations, and they expect me and everyone else to follow those expectations. But it's okay for that person to go and break those expectations the entirety of the relationship, therefore, is on my shoulders, and I'm not okay with that, right? This is not a relationship that is one that I can trust well, okay? I can still love this person because love is something that is not conditional, right? We don't love just simply because somebody is nice or because they're not nice, right? We don't love because somebody's in our life or because they're out of our life. Love is something that is unconditional no matter what. And so anything that feels like, okay, I'm going to give you my my care and my, intention, and, and my attention, but I'm going to revoke it if you don't do X, Y, Z, that's not love. It's truly not. That is coercion, manipulation, and um, force, actually. That is actually something that we cannot trust. Because the intent behind that is all about the other person. 
they're not considering you in that uh, situation or in their situations, in their life at all. Love, however, when it's truly love, you can still be respectful. You can still be kind. You can still think the best of people while still keeping your distance. Knowing that that's the most loving thing you can do for the other person and yourself. And that's it. Truly. But the way you speak to the other person always is loving and respectful. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't tell them the truth. Okay? Because truth is love. Truth is respect. But the way you deliver that also makes a difference. So, for example, say that your husband has been uh, looking at pornography uh, several times a day. He's been lying to you about the pornography usage, but you keep finding the truth. Well, if that's the case, it's okay for you to say, hmm, honey, I have been really considering this uh, problem, this relationship. I It's definitely not respectful towards me, uh, this excessive use of pornography. Um, it's very you self-dealing. So for now, I think that you need to go sleep at your mom's for a while. And here's the reasons why. I think this is the most loving thing that I can do for you right now to give you some space and let you get some things figured out. That is setting a boundary in love. Or you can say, you big piece of crap. I hate your guts. You're sleeping at your mom's. I am so sick and tired of you. And you can see the difference, right? That is not set up in love. That is you communicating all of your emotion to them and all of the anger and all the frustration. And there's nothing wrong with having emotion, anger, and frustration. But when you communicate through that lens, that is all they hear. Now, one of the problems that your husband is dealing with, if he's dealing with a pornography addiction, is his self-worth and self-esteem. Remember, people do not behave above what they believe about themselves. So if they're dealing with some sort of an addic addictive habit, the likelihood that they have a high self-worth is not great. And so when you communicate through the, the, the lens of, I am hurting, you're a jerk, you sh promise you, sh you would have stopped this long time ago, what ends up happening is you actually feed the habit and feed the bad behavior or when however we still set the boundary but we set the boundary in love and respect and and kindness that is a boundary that is uh, a lot harder to break because these are boundaries that are set in love and clarity same outcome, well, same boundary, but a very different outcome. Another thing about trust. Um, oftentimes, like something I hear a lot of my clients and potential clients saying is, I want to trust him again, but I don't know that I can. He says I can, um, and I want to give him my trust, but he still isn't doing certain things that I think would help me trust him more. It's just been a week and he thinks I should give, give him my trust again. And so because my client has been guilt tripped, she turns around and gives her trust back only to find it being broken again in a matter of a few minutes. And the problem with that, I mean, obviously, you can see there's a lot of problems with that, okay? This is why trust needs to be defined, okay? Because when we can give a word certain characteristics or a definition, 
we can know what we're looking for. So what are the definitions to trust for me at least? And you know, and I think this is something that is kind of true across the board when it comes to trust. Number one, I think that trust is <clears throat> something that holds a lot of respect, okay? Now, again, if you remember me saying that, you know, I've got difficult people in my life, but just because they're difficult doesn't mean that I don't have to respect them. The reason why I respect them has nothing to do with whether or not they deserve respect. I deserve to respect. It's more like that, okay? And here's the reason why. I have a lot of faith and confidence in myself. I really, really like who I am. And because of that, whenever I show up in a very disrespectful way, I don't like it. It doesn't feel good to me. Now, that doesn't mean, again, like I said, that I don't tell people the truth. And they can take that as respectful or disrespectful. But I'm not going to sit there. Like, I feel like it's very disrespectful to tell somebody everything that they want to hear. But I also feel like it's very disrespectful to tell somebody all of the horrible things about them. I think that respect is somewhere in the middle, okay? Where we do communicate 90% of all of the good things about a person, okay? And the reason why is, again, people do not behave above what they believe about themselves, right? So if we're bringing up all of their good characteristics, that's really, really helpful. So if a person is really, really angry all the time, catch the times that they're not and love that piece. If a person is not really great at helping you out or helping around the house, right? When they do help, we want to really, really focus on those things, okay? But there is also something to be said about giving 10% feedback that isn't always super feel good. You know, if somebody is being hypocritical, you know, sometimes it's okay to say that. If they're expecting, and remember there's that word again, right? If they're expecting everyone else to live all of these rules and all of these things that they themselves are not living, that's a hypocrite. That is completely being hypocritical. And when you don't want to have really a lot to do with that person and they're getting angry at you not following their rules, and you can say, hey, you're feeling very hypocritical to me. And that's the reason why I want nothing to do with this. There's nothing wrong with that. That is okay to say. They might not like it. They might get angry. That is on them. That has nothing to do with you telling the truth. But that does make you actually a, a trustworthy person. Someone that is going to tell the truth, no matter what, but also in a great degree of love, is a trustworthy person. Okay? And a person that has the intentions behind what they want to do and what they want to create in their life, and they don't hold expectations of you, that person is also trustworthy. If you remember me saying that the opposite to expectation is intention, right? Well, a person that lives an intentional life sets goals that they themselves go out and achieve. Now, that doesn't mean that every goal 
is something that we have to achieve alone. This is where we start the enrollment processes of bringing people on board into the visions that we have because they have similar visions, right? So say the house is a mess and one of your values is to have a clean house. I value a clean house. Um, enrolling the kids in that clean home looks like, hey, do you guys like living in a clean home? What are the benefits? of living in a clean home? What are the benefits of cleaning up after ourselves? What are the benefits of X, Y, Z? And that's also an enrollment process of, hey, you wanna to go to your friend's house? Cool, I think that's great. What are the steps to get there, right? Because that's something that is life. We teach our kids life principles, such as if we have a goal, we do not expect other people to achieve it for us by a, by making them uh, tell us that we don't have to worry about chores that day or we don't have to worry about homework that day or we don't have to worry about our commitments that day. We can just go do what we want to do. That's not helpful for our kids, right? However, when we help our kids and other people understand the steps to the goal that they want to create. And we show them how to achieve those steps so they can have their goal. That is a life skill. There's nothing wrong with having kids and it's not even an expectation, that's an intention. An intention for to be a great mom, great parent, clean home, and enrolling people in your vision because they have a similar vision that's creating connection that is creating trust that is creating relationships and that's creating a life that is living intentionally they can still choose not to help out but they cannot choose to have the reward and that is the piece here that i think sometimes we forget especially when it comes to our spouses. Going back to the situation of, of the, the wife whose husband just expects her to trust him, even though he has been looking at pornography, possibly masturbating in the bed, and doing all of these things that are highly disrespectful to her, but yet he hasn't, he hasn't told her in a week that he's done anything, and so she should automatically respect him now. or trust him, I should say. Yes, you should respect, but trust, that's a different story, right? He wants her trust, that is the goal, but he's not doing anything to achieve it. So therefore, the goal has now become an expectation on her, not an intention on him. The intention puts the power of the do in our hands. The expectation puts the power of the do in everyone else's. And so you're consistently waiting for your goal to manifest. Another way I see this consistently used, especially in today's society, <clears throat> is we tend to... Um, blame government officials for the way our economy is or for the way uh, the world is or, or anything like that. But the truth of the matter, like if we're going to get really, really honestly truthful, any government is only a reflection of its people because we're the ones that voted them in. If we do not know how to live intentional lives, we set expectations on government that they are not going to create, make. It is up to the people, therefore, to actually live the intention. And when people in government are not 
working with you on that intention, remember enrolling in the vision, um, those are people that actually need to be replaced. Now, I'm not being specific, right, with this, because everybody has their beliefs and their values behind their beliefs. But we really, truly do need to vote for people that reflect our value system. So, for me, I value freedom. I value my voice, being able to speak up. I value my ability to choose for myself, to govern myself, okay? And personally, I think I'm a pretty good person to do that, right? I believe in uh, honoring, obeying, and sustaining a just law. And I believe in just living a very simple life. I believe in having relationships that show up to support me, that I can show up to support as well. I believe in trust. I believe in God. I believe in having a relationship with God and with my family and with friends. Like, I believe in these things. These are things that I highly value. Therefore, I am going to watch for people that reflect those same values and those are the people that I want to put in office right okay so I'm just saying like like we can take a look at these things because I know that there's a lot of complaining also about uh, the people that are in office well this is where we again have to start looking at our values setting boundaries that reflect those values and then putting people in office that are also going to reflect those values. A great economy, something else I have value, right? We need to be really, really intentional with those things, not just because somebody looks nice or sounds nice. We actually have to look at what they do in order to know if that's a person we can trust in a certain position in our lives. Okay. So, Let's talk really quickly also about the three C's of trust, okay? We know we've got connection, communication, creation, okay? <clears throat> if you consider those three C's of trust, okay, they will also give you characteristics of a person that is trustworthy. Now, remember, trust is something that has a very high level of respect in it. When a person is respecting you, this is usually a person that's going to show it through connecting with you in a respectful way, communicating with you in a respectful way, and creating with you in a respectful way. And these are also people that have a lot of boundaries, but they are boundaries that if you yourself are being respectful of, if you're just being respectful of the relationship and the other person and yourself, boundaries are actually really, really easy to navigate. But if you're feeling like, hey, I'm actually being really respectful of this person and I'm trying to live their boundaries, but I'm not sure if I'm going to step on a landmine or not, that usually is a person that is not respectful. That is a person that is full of expectations. Okay? So. Let's talk about the way they connect with you, okay? Connection is really, really important, okay? A person that wants to connect with you is a person that is really going to listen to your boundaries. <coughs> They're not afraid of those boundaries, again, like I said, because... They are boundary oriented themselves. They are self governing. Um, they are. They live a life of intention. They're not going to put their goals on you yet. They will see if you want to come along for the ride. 
if you would like to achieve something with them, okay? And enroll your intention with their intention. That is what they do. They want to be around you. They want to spend time with you. And when they are around you and they spend time with you, you feel uplifted. You feel fed. You feel safe. You feel whole. You feel like you can be yourself without fear of judgment, without fear of consistent reproach, and without fear of stepping on a landmine. A person that you have to walk on eggshells with on a consistent basis is not a person that you can trust. People that truly want relationships with you are people that are going to want to connect with you on a very whole level. Giving you respect, giving you love, and them being, honoring your boundaries, I should say that too, and they are on a consistent journey of self-respect, self-love, and self um security self peace these are people that are very secure and confident in themselves and so when they realize that they have done something wrong cuz inevitably everybody does we accidentally step on other people's toes all the time but a a trustworthy person is someone that's going to come to you because they value the connection and they're going to say hey i am so sorry about that um, how can I make that right? And then they go and they make it right. Now, this is a person that is also going to communicate through their words and their actions to you that you are valued to them. It's all nice and fun and dandy. For a husband who has just barely looked at pornography, masturbated, and then just comes and says, oh, I'm so sorry about that, to a wife, to say, hey, you know what, I love you, I think you're great. But then he turns around the next day and he's looking at pornography and masturbating again, right? Or he's not listening. That's a communication. That is something he is saying, but his actions are not lining up with what he is saying. That is a big piece to trust. When actions and words are not lining up with each other, they're not communicating the same thing. And you're not sure which one to believe. That is a very clear sign that this is not a trustworthy person. Now, that doesn't mean you need to go divorce the person, okay? I'm not saying that. But it is also okay to say when they expect your trust, listen, trust is a very important thing to me. When I trust a person, it is because... They value what I think and say. They value me as a person. They value my my time. They listen to me. Uh, depending on the relationship, they value me sexually. And they value uh, me on a financial level. They say things to me that their actions back up. These are not things that I'm seeing you do. I will respect you, but I cannot trust you. And there's nothing wrong with saying that at all. That is simply truth delivered in a very loving package. 
It still might cut. It still might not make them happy. But that is not your job. It is their job to go and find happiness. You can be along for the ride. And you can be a big piece in that happiness, yes. But they are responsible for their own happiness just as you are responsible for yours. So if the truth is cutting to them and they don't like it and they're angry at you because you spoke the truth and you gave it to them in a loving way, that's on them. That's okay. Let them be angry. Now, granted, you know, there is the exception to this rule that if you feel like you're in a physical danger for speaking the truth, this is a relationship that you really do not need to have in your life, okay? But just because somebody acts like a toddler because you spoke the truth, that's on them, not on you. You're not the one rocking the boat. You're not the one acting angry. You're not the one acting crazy. People who rock boats act angry, crazy, and and irrational. Okay? But people that don't rock the boats can handle truth. They can handle feedback. And they will communicate that to you with respect. Thank you so much for that feedback. That is something I will look into, and that is something that I will work on. Because they, again, have similar values to as you do, and you are one of their values. Okay? All right. So their actions need to line up with their words. Listen to the action of a person. Not to judge them as a good or bad person, but to judge whether or not they are a safe person to trust. It's simply that. Okay? The third C to this. Does this person want to create with you? If they do, they're going to create a connection. They are going to create open lines of communication. Listen to that feedback, right? And really consider what it is you're saying. But does this person want to create things in their life with you? Let's take this through the, the relational tiers, right? Your four main relationships. Let's talk about your relationship with God, okay? From God's perspective. What does God want to create with you? Now, yes, he has lots of kids, billions, honestly, and possibly more, okay? But he wants to create something specific with each specific child my viewpoint is that we are not here for god god is here for us no that doesn't mean that we should not listen to him do his will no i am an advocate for that if you are here to he heal do God's will. <laughs> that is the beginning step. Absolutely. Okay. But the reason why is because he wants to create you. He wants to create the very best version of you possible. So who are you? Who are you to God? Who does he see? And if you really, really have the God goggles on, when you view yourself through his lens, you will be awestruck at yourself. You will reverence yourself 
because true humility is exactly that. <clears throat> it is a reverence of greatness. When we recognize our power and our potential, we recognize it's there because of God and because God gave it to us. But we and but we also recognize that that is a godly characteristic. God is love. God is truth. God is security. God is kind. God is respect. God is creation. He is all of these things. And we have the ability within us to do the same things. Love, give kindness, give respect, give charity, give creation. Right? We have those same characteristics. And the reason why is because we are his child. We have within us inherent characteristics that he has given us from him. That is truth. These are the reason why we have these things is so that way we can connect to him on a deeper level because these are things we can understand in order to create a relationship, a deep, loving, connected relationship with someone. We have to understand them based upon similar characteristics. Therefore, when I say that God wants to create you, he wants you to feel amazing because of who you are. That is a confidence that is very anchored in truth. And that doesn't mean that I still don't make mistakes, right? But when a mistake is made, Instead of beating myself over the head, I quickly forgive. And the very next thing is I said, ooh, that was out of alignment with my values. That was out of alignment with who I truly am. And so I am going to do this instead. Okay? For example... If there's ever anything in my life that I feel is not in alignment with my relationship with God, because I value my relationship with God extremely. But it's something that I have a hard time giving up. Say, for example, certain foods. You know, I believe very much that our body was given, is given to us to... Um, to love, to honor, to protect, to cherish. And our body does the same thing back to us. And it's given to us by God. It is a gift. And so anything that I put in my body that does not promote health and wellness, therefore, is something that I'm going to say, hmm, that really was not in alignment with my value. So how can I do better? And I'm going to give forgive myself every single time that I go eat sugar or drink a pop or, uh, you know, do things that are that are really enticing to the body. Okay. But when we when we do fail to live up to our standard, instead of getting angry. We replace it with love, forgiveness, patience, and we look for ways we can do better. It's just an invitation to do better today than what you did yesterday and better tomorrow than what you did today. Just that little 5% more is all it is. What do you want to create with you? How can you trust yourself? If you're someone that feels you can't trust yourself because 
you've set up all these lofty goals and then you break them. It doesn't mean that you can't trust yourself. All that means is that you weren't clear with who you are and what your values are. And that's not always, again, remember necessarily your fault. I have um, a client, she's just the sweetest, I love her pieces, but she's a product of um, the foster care, growing up in the foster care and being passed from home to home to home to home. And one thing that she has very deeply ingrained in her subconscious is that she has nowhere to belong. So when she finally finds a place of belonging, it's very foreign to her. And she doesn't know what to think about this. Meaning that now she feels like she has to step on eggshells around every person. And because of that, they feel like they have to step on eggshells around her, right? One of the things that she and I have been working on is finding out, like, what are her values? What does she value in herself? And, like, really, really sitting with these questions. These are not questions to be answered in five minutes. These are questions to ponder and get deep with. Answers are always simple, but sometimes they're just buried really, really deep with all kind, uh, underneath all kinds of confusion, what ifs, the shouldings, and expectation. So when we just sit and we get quiet with some questions, what are the values and what do I value in myself? That can help us start to bring a level of trust up up a trust for ourself that will help us get into creation mode. What about with other people? Oh, actually, I, I need to back up for just a second. I'm sorry, guys, but I also want to hit on creation and communication with regards to um, God and yourself as well. If you truly want to connect with God and if you truly want to connect with yourself, that's the beginning. Okay, our relationships are also built upon our desires. We desire to have a relationship with someone. Okay, so how we connect with God, our desire to connect with God comes through our communication, prayer, and our actions right communication is is through thought word and actions so if our thoughts are consistently with the lord if our communication is consistently with the lord and our actions are consistently with god then we have a mind a godful mind it also helps us have connection and communication with ourselves. Because again, when we're connected to the Lord, we feel those characteristics within ourselves that helps us connect to the truth of ourself. We see our potential and we see ourselves as a joy-filled, light-filled being. We see the truth. And therefore, whenever something happens that is out of alignment with that view, we can quickly communicate, hey, I love you. I forgive you. This is what I would like to see happen next time. And we just get to get clear on what the adjustment looks like for ourselves. And so we communicate very loving, peaceful, gentle, kind things with a realization that, hey, we still have growth. And we're going to have growth because we're mortal and we're human and we don't do everything perfectly. But it's okay as long as we consistently try to do better. 
And what do we want to create with ourselves? What do we want to create for ourselves? What kind of a life are we really looking for? Well, that's going to speak very deeply into the third tier, which is relationship with others, right? What kind of relationships do you really seriously want in your life? What do they have in characteristics? These are people out there that are going to show up in a respectful way. They are going to have high values for themselves. They are going to love hard and they can take feedback. These are people that value themselves and through that will also value you. As, as I, would, I don't want to say should because it's not a shoulding thing, but it just kind of naturally happens. When you live this way for yourself, you find people that will also live this way for themselves. And so when you come together, you have beautiful, beautiful communication, creation, and connection. And these are people that you lift up and lift you up as well. In the very last uh, tier is the abundance tier, right? When you have these things that you're focusing on, trust, truth, love, charity, forgiveness, kindness, a desire to do better every single day, just a little bit, because you know you're worth it and the people around you know they're worth it. And therefore, there's all this love and respect happening. Your abundant situation shows this. These are people that desire to have financial transactions with you. Money loves trust. Loves it. When you can figure out how you can serve the world and you consistently show up as a trustworthy person and you call to you people that are also trustworthy that can have a great connection with you, remember that connection, and you communicate value and trust and love back to them, these are people that actually want to have some sort of financial transaction with you. Money follows trust. For example, Amazon. We trust Amazon to get us quality things to our door in not much time at all. And they trust us to pay them. Therefore, we have a trusting relationship somewhere with Amazon. Okay? So I hope this is helpful, you guys. Deeper levels of trust require, like if we're going to really simplify this, they really require you to get clear with who you are. What are your values? Because if you're living a life for everyone else, and you consistently forget yourself, that's not a trust, trustworthy relationship. That is a relationship where you are going to consistently betray yourself. You have to be important in your life too. Okay, my loves. Again, don't forget, come see me at Rejuvenate You. I have three tickets. If you guys are interested in the free tickets, make sure that you message me. I will tell you how those free tickets can be gained. Until next week, my loves, from my heart to your heart, I'll see you on the other side. Bye.